Hello, today we're going to look at separating mixtures, but before we do anything else, it's probably very important to dis uh, define what we mean by a mixture. So a mixture is when we have two or more substances, and by substances we mean elements or compounds, and they are together, but they are not chemically combined together. So there has been no chemical reaction that's joined them, and there are no new substances. And when we talk about the elements and compounds in that mixture, they all keep their own chemical properties because they have not changed by a chemical reaction. They remain exactly the same. We are going to look at ways in which we can separate out the parts of mixtures. So there's a few techniques we're going to look at over the next couple of videos. So it might be worth just making a note of what they are. And the first one is filtration. Filtration or filtering, that's the first one we're going to look at. The second one is uh, crystallization. Sometimes people refer to that as evaporation, but we're going to call it crystallization. We've got something called distillation, and one type of distillation is fractional distillation. And then the final method we're going to look at is something called chromatography. That's the final method we're going to look at for separating out mixtures. But for today, for this video, we're looking at filtration, crystallization, and distillation. Before we go on to look at each of the methods, it's probably worth looking at a few examples of mixtures. So for the first one, we've got um, a little flask there containing water. And the example we could use is water with some oil added. So we can add some oil to the water and there we're going to have a mixture and we can put a cork on the flask there give it a good shake to give it a good mix and then we could leave it to settle for a while and in fact the mixture will then automatically separate out you may have seen this before done this before but the oil floats on top of the water and the oil stays with the oil, the water stays with the water, there's no change in chemical properties. So that's one kind of mixture and it actually separates out by itself. Another kind of mixture is when you have something that doesn't dissolve or is not a liquid, it's something like sand in water. So sand is insoluble and if you put that in some water, as I'm sure you have seen before, the sand will not uh, dissolve in the water and we just have a, a simple mixture. This one here we have some salt we can sprinkle some salt in the water there and we'll end up with what we call a solution the salt makes a solution because the salt is something that we call soluble in other words it can dissolve and make a solution so here we've got some examples of some mixtures and let's take a look at the first first method for separating out mixtures this one is called filtering and the basic idea of filtering is separating out substances based on particle size. So if you've got different sized particles in a mixture, whether it's um, sand in water or maybe something that you could just do very simply at home in the kitchen with a sieve, you can separate out the different parts based on how big they are. Now, in terms of our sand and water, we're going to call this sandy water sand as we know is insoluble that's looking like sandy is insoluble but what i mean is sand is insoluble and we can use filter paper and filter paper is just like ordinary paper but it allows it allows things to soak through it a bit more easily than ordinary paper and why does filter paper work well Firstly, how do we use it? Well, we fold it in half, fold it in quarters, make a cone shape, and we can then put it into a what we call a filter funnel. We can then add our mixture into the cone-shaped filter paper, and that will then separate out the water from, in this example, the sand. The sand will stay in the filter paper, but it could be anything that's insoluble. So how does it actually work? Well, here's a diagram of our setup. We've got our sand and water in the filter paper cone there inside the filter funnel. And if we looked very closely at that area there, you can see we've got our sand grains, our sand particles. We've got our water particles, which are very, very, very tiny compared to the sand. And in the middle there, that dotted line, that's our filter paper. The filter paper has tiny pores. 
The sand is too big to go through those pores, but the water can quite easily get through. So in that way, the water separates out from the sand. Um, the sand that's left in the filter paper, we sometimes call that the residue. That's the thing that's left over. OK, so that's filtering based on the idea of particle size. The next thing we're going to look at is what we call crystallization. OK, so in this example, imagine we have salt and water, in other words, a salt solution. So the salt, as you know, can dissolve. There won't be large particles of salt in there and the salt dissolves because it is soluble. And the reason why we can't use filtering, because if we look at the particles of salt and the particles of water, they are both very tiny and they can both pass through the filter paper. So filtering won't work in this example. There we go, the salt particles go through and the water particles go through as well. They just can move freely through the filter paper. So in this case, it doesn't work. So we use something called crystallization. How does that work? Well, we need a piece of apparatus called an evaporating basin, or sometimes called an evaporating dish. And all we do is basically put our solution into the dish into the basin and let it evaporate. So the water will evaporate, leaving the salt behind. But what we do is give it a little helping hand. So here we've got a setup of apparatus. There's a beaker with water. There's our solution in the evaporating dish. And this is just ordinary water being heated by a Bunsen burner. So the water gets heated, evaporates, and that warm water vapor will then gently heat the evaporating dish with the solution inside. That beaker is not floating in the air, by the way. I just haven't drawn the tripod and other bits around it. Okay, so the water evaporates away, but the salt does not evaporate. So that means if the water evaporates away, we're going to be left with salt solution. Let's just uh, label that solution there. So we know what that is. So how does this work? Well, we evaporate down the solution in our, in our evaporating dish. And we go to maybe just about halfway. So we evaporate about half of it. After we've done that, we just basically leave it for a few days at room temperature to allow the rest of the water to evaporate. And once we've done that, we get crystallization, the formation of crystals of, in this case, salt. Why do we get those crystals? Well, as the solution cools down, less salt is able to stay in the solution. So it comes out as crystals. It actually comes out of solution. Also, as the solution evaporates over time, there's less water. So obviously less salt can stay evaporated. Sorry, less salt can stay in the solution. So it then comes out as crystals. Okay, so that's explaining in red there why we get the crystals coming out of the solution. And this is the method and how crystallization is used. Okay, and the next and then final method that I would like to look at is distillation. And here is some simple apparatus that shows distillation. When do we use distillation? Well, this is when we want to recover the water in the last example the water just evaporated away but if we want to recover the liquid and in this case it's water we can use distillation we also use this sometimes when we want to separate out a mixture of different liquids and we're going to look at that in detail when we do fractional distillation how does it work so we basically have let's just say let's just stick to our salt solution here so we've got our salt solution being heated by our bunsen burner and once that's heated, the water will evaporate away, but it doesn't just go into the air. It gets moved through a what we call a delivery tube. That's the thinner tube inside the cool water jacket that I've just drawn. The cool water jacket it just has two tubes. Water goes in one, circulates around the inner glass tube, and then comes out the other end. That has the effect of cooling this, what we call the delivery tube. So basically, it's a tube inside a tube. 
and a result as a result of that we get pure water being distilled out and we can collect that in a beaker so how does that actually work well here we have the evaporation of the water from the solution remember it's just the water that's evaporating away that then moves up the flask and through this delivery tube where the cool water jacket will cool it down when the vapors cooled down it goes from being a gas back into a liquid and we call that condensation so the water vapor condenses back into a liquid and gives us our pure water so um, here is an example of actually in it in action this is recovering a liquid called ethanol from a mixture of uh, chlorophyll and ethanol okay so you can see there that the pure ethanol just gets distilled out of that very green yucky looking liquid okay so that's just an example of how it can be used the last thing I want to do is for you to have a go at a couple of examples yourself imagine you've got these two mixtures have a pause here and th have a think about how you would actually separate these out if you wanted to collect the parts of the mixture in terms of the sand and sugar well we know that sand is insoluble it does not dissolve and we know that sugar is soluble or if you didn't know that you know that now so how do we separate them out well we can add some water to that mixture what's going to happen to the sand nothing so we can filter that out as we've described that will the filtering will remove the sand and the reasons why we've already explained and then we can crystallize to recover the sugar or we can say we can evaporate off the water to recover the sugar in this case in this example we're not recovering the water that we've added okay so that's like using a two-step process to separate out those two parts in this one it's not actually much more difficult than the previous one you could actually if the pebbles were big enough just pick them out or if you had a sieve that had the right size holes you could just sieve out the pebbles based on the size the sand and sugar we've already done just there so that would be just the case of picking out the pebbles and then using the method of above to separate out the sand and the sugar okay so quite a long video but some important points in there we've got three separation techniques and the reason why they work okay so that's it for today and we'll look at more separation techniques in the next video but other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon